Hi there, welcome to the slider control tutorial. Here you learn all about the basic puppeteering motions included with Crazy Talk, as well as how you can customize your own in real time using slider control. To open the puppeteering panel, simply click the button on your left toolbar. Let's check out the individual body motions first. I'll give you a brief orientation so you can easily access these motions in the future. First you'll see your head movements. Here you can apply motions to your character's head. The arm motions do the same thing for the arms. The torso section will move the whole torso, and the leg section will move the legs. There are also base motions that manipulate the entire body. The move motions are how your character gets around, such as walking or running. Use the idle motions for natural movement when your character is inactive. There is even a fighting idle motion. The talk section contains various exaggerated talking animations, while the mood section contains emotional actions. It is important to note that all body part and base motion actions have an S or an F on the front. This means they are either suitable for front profile or side profile characters. However, Crazy Talk Animator will try to fit the motion to your character regardless of its profile. I'll select the walk motion under the move section and click preview. You can also simply press the space key to preview. I'll also give a quick preview of the running motion. And here's the jumping motion. These are all preset motion templates that will loop as long as you preview in slider mode. I'll go back to the walking motion preview to demonstrate the exaggeration in speed motion sliders. As you can see, when I bring the exaggeration slider down, the character's walk will be more tentative, whereas if I bring it up, the walk will be more purposeful. The same goes for the speed slider. If I bring it down, the character will walk slowly, whereas if I bring it up, I can increase the walking speed. I can also simply enter in the value that I would like by typing it in too. The next thing I'll demonstrate is the motion preset sliders. This is where I can further customize my character's motion. Here I'm adjusting the stride length from short to long. Adjusting the feet motion slider will alter how dynamic the feet movement is. I can move the hips up or down, which is a useful tool for adding personality to your character's motion. Lowering or increasing hip motion is also good for that. You can also create a nice zombie walk by bringing your character's arms forward as they walk, or move them backward. Arm swing and forearm bend are both interesting ways to add dynamism to your walk. You can also bend your character forward or backward, change the settings for torso motion, lower and raise the head, and adjust head motion. Remember that each individual motion has different motion preset sliders. Now I'm going to adjust my character's motion preset parameters to give her my own custom walk and save it. I want to have a more confident scroll, so first I'll bend my character backwards a bit and raise the head slightly. I'll increase the hip motion and arm swing to give it a more dynamic look. Putting the hips up and increasing the foot motion will also help to give my walk more energy and purpose. I can also make various other adjustments as well. Now just watch for a moment and observe how the character's movements change. Lastly, I'll add a little forearm bend. If I want to keep this customized motion profile for the future, I can save it by selecting Save at the top of the puppeteering window. Once I've saved it, I can open the exact same profile anytime by selecting the Open Profile button beside the Save button. Lastly, I'll record my walk so that it will be saved onto my scene. I just need to press the Record button or press the Alt Space keys. Once my motion is recorded, I'll close down the puppeteering window and play back my animation. As you can see, the walking animation has now been recorded. I can now open up the timeline by pressing the F3 short key to see where my motion is. If I open up the body motion section, I can see my motion has been saved there as a clip. I can zoom in and out of my timeline by clicking and dragging to extend the white location indicator. You can also drag this indicator to scroll back and forth through your animation. In this next section, I'm going to show you how you can adjust the sliders in real time and record more variable puppeteering motions using slider control. 
As you can see, while I'm previewing the motion, I can make real-time adjustments using the motion profile sliders. Everything from moving my character left and right to tilting his head back and forth. I'm going to do the exact same thing, only this time I'm recording. If I'm in recording mode, all the real-time inputs will be saved into the animation. You can move your character left or right along to the rhythm of his waving motions, or you can tilt his head to add some more character to the motion. Now I'm going to open the timeline and play back the animation. As you can see, it remains as one long clip in my body motion track, and all the alterations I made in real time are included with the animation. As you can see, with a single motion profile, there are nearly unlimited possibilities for unique and customized motions. That's about it for slider control, now get out there and try it yourself.